Well, hello. Here's a fun program that makes spirals using processing. That's at processing.org and Scala, the programming language, scala-lang.org. You can see it on the right here. It's a spiral made up of kind of points or lines. Um, really, each of these elements here is a circle. So you could think of them as giant pixels. Here's the program that makes it. Um, what's interesting with it? Let's start right at the middle of it. Here's what produces those giant pixels. They're seven by seven, these things. They're seven by seven screen pixels. Um, what affects the color here? They start out green, and then as you get toward the center with a smaller radius, they are blue. Kind of a gradient from green to blue. How does that work? Well, it is a function of the radius. So it's kind of uh, how green it is, is what proportion of the radius, or actually what proportion of the starting radius, which is here, is the particular part being drawn. So if it's out here, it's 100%, which makes it all green. And if it's right in the middle, then it's 0%, which makes it no green. So that talks about the green part. What about the blue part? Well, the blue is just kind of like um, the opposite of the green. These numbers go from 0 to 255. So if we say that the blue amount is 255 minus green, then when green is at the maximum, blue will be at the minimum, and vice versa. What else? What controls the positioning of these circles that make up the spiral? Well, here's one with a very small change in radius. Um, well, let's see. Why don't we start by looking at some of these values up here. The screen dimension is 1080. That's the height and width of this window here, which is suitable for high-definition recording. And points to add per frame is we're trying to get about, oh, I guess we're asking for 120 frames per second. And we're trying to add 15 points per frame. Uh, so you can think of it as kind of the speed at which it draws. If you change that to one point per frame, then it's much slower. The starting radius is uh, a little less than half of the way over from the center. So from here to here, that is 0.48 of the screen width. And then these numbers, these minimum and maximum, you notice that each time we draw a spiral, it's different from the others. Something random about it. And what's random is the amount by which we decrease the radius after drawing each circle. And uh, I just, by experimenting, chose what range of amounts I wanted to have. And this is a pretty good range. And um, these are in pixels. So after it draws each of these circles, it decreases this amount by 1 one hundredth of a pixel, which seems pretty small. But considering all the ones that get drawn on the way around, um, it does make sense. And then the maximum is half a pixel. So some of them are just roop de doop you know, and it barely makes it like that, like these. Those have larger radius decrement pixel values. Next, this crazy thing, um, it's a fun feature of the Scala programming language that you can use Unicode symbols as identifiers. And the these are Greek letters. This is delta and this is theta. Theta is often used for angles, and, that, and this represents, and delta is often used to represent a change. So this is the change in the angle each time. So we draw a circle, and then we increase the angle. The angle starts in standard position, zero radians. And a reminder, a radian is the distance that you could travel around the circumference if you, 
if you went the amount of a radius. So imagine a radius, and you could bend it around the circumference, then that is a, um, that's a radian. So the angle starts at zero radians, and then it increases by 0 0.005 radians after each time. Uh, okay, now we set the radius to the starting radius, which is out here, and then we randomly choose the decrement amount. The decrement amount is what controls the distance between the, the arms, if you like, of the spiral. And the theta here is the original angle. And this sets the size of the window. This says we want to get 120 frames per second, if we can. This clears the background to black. And, oh, this we're not using. I'm going to take that out. There's no text in here. Uh, in the draw, what do we do? Let's ignore, let's ignore these for now and just get into this part. Push matrix and pop matrix allow us to isolate transformations that we're making. And the transformation that we're making is we're, we're shifting the origin to the center. Processing the orange, the origin is at the top left. And to make the math easier, oh, this is a nice one. We move the origin to the center. That's what this translate does. Now, how do you draw a circle or something or a spiral? Um, you can use the radius along with cosine and sine to produce x and y values for you. So we multiply the cosine of the angle by the radius, and that gives us the x value. So what's the x value for the first one? It is um, 1 times the starting radius. Um, because radius starts out at the starting radius. Um, cosine of theta, where theta is 0, I'm pretty sure is 1. And then uh, to kind of stretch it out, we multiply by the, the radius, which brings it out to here. Um, I mentioned how the green works, the green amount and the blue amount. Uh, stroke, fill and stroke set to the same. When these circles are drawn, you can have different colors for the outside and the inside, and we're using the same color. Then after we draw each circle, we decrement the radius by this radius decrement amount. Then, this is a little tricky, we're modifying the angle, theta. We're just going to increase the angle by some amount. And what amount do we increase it by? Well, we increase it by this delta theta variable, which we have set to 0 0.005. So um, the first, the, the angle for the first point here is 0. The angle for the second point is 0 0.005, because we've added 0 0.005 to it. Now, what does this part do? Well, in radians, you can go all the way around with an angle of 2 pi radians. So what we do is once we get all the way around, notice we're going around and around and around and around. Um, once we get all the way around, eventually it's going to get over 2 pi. So we use this remainder operator to, it's kind of like... Um, remove all the multiples of 2 pi. So we're starting over again. Uh, what else? How do we randomly choose the radius decrement amount? That is just done randomly. We find the range of values that we want, and then we multiply that by math.random. Math.random gives you a real number between 0 and 1. Okay, so 
that is a spiral drawing program.